Welcome to Maximizing Your Year End Giving, where we will explore some unique ways for you to give to your favorite charities in this giving season. So 30% of annual giving occurs in December. That means it's a busy time of year for your giving advisors. My name is Beth Robeson, and I'm the Development Director for Cincinnati Green Umbrella. And Green Umbrella is a nonprofit working to address climate change and to help build a more resilient, equitable, and thriving future. And I'm excited today to be joined by two experts in charitable giving to talk about a few unique ways to give that you might want to consider this giving season. Leah Bobby is Senior Philanthropic Strategies Advisor for the Greater Cincinnati Foundation, where she works collaboratively with individuals and their professional advisors to help them achieve maximum philanthropic impact. Welcome, Leah. Thank you. And Logan Holman is an experienced certified public accountant who specializes in individual tax. And after nearly a decade with traditional accounting firms, working with affluent families and business owners, she has co-founded her own tax company, Vivify. And Vivify brings tax services to the everyday taxpayer. Welcome, Logan. Hi, Beth, thank you. So before we begin, I wanna clarify that while I'm with Green Umbrella, our discussion today pertains to charitable giving for any 501c3 organization. And I want to say that I'm looking forward to chatting with both of you because this time of year, I do get a lot of questions from donors about unique ways to give. And um, I thought having this conversation today would be a great way for us to explore some of those questions and do a little bit of a deeper dive. So shall we dig in? Yes, let's do it. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. One question I've gotten recently is uh, with the growth in stocks and kind of the good market we've had since the end of 2022, how donors are interested in how they can kind of take advantage of that uh, stock growth in terms of their charitable giving. So do you guys have ideas for that? Yeah, I'll, I'll take this one, Leah. So there's actually a way that you can gift or donate appreciated stock without actually having to sell, generate that capital gain on your tax return. So how this works is you buy a stock, let's say you spend $100 on it, now it's worth $1,000. So you have that large gain, you want to be able to help an organization like Green Umbrella. And typically you might think, okay, I have to sell this stock report a $900 capital gain on my tax return. Yeah. We tax on it. And then that leftover cash, I'll give to the charity. You can actually skip the steps in between and make a greater impact with that by just taking that stock that's worth $1,000 and transferring it directly to the organization. Oh, wow. This, this is great because your taxable income stays down not paying that capital gains tax. And the organization doesn't have to pay the capital gains tax either. So you're just really avoiding that altogether. And um, even though I only paid $100 for that stock, however many years ago, this year I'm getting a full deduction, tax deduction for the fair market value. So I'm getting a $1,000 deduction going to that charity. So yeah, this is a great time to capitalize on those appreciated stocks. I love that, Logan, so much. And at GCF, we see a lot of folks who choose to utilize a gift of appreciated stock by creating what is called a donor advised fund. Yes. Um, this is a vehicle that is becoming so popular for folks and more and more nonprofits are seeing gifts come through a donor advised fund. Um, this is great because a lot of folks can choose to front load their giving um, by making one big gift that can then be granted to as many organizations as you please over the years. And you can really have a greater tax impact, especially in that one um, taxable event that you may have this year or next year. Oh, um, wow. You can receive just one acknowledgement letter for your taxes, which is really nice for <laughs> your end of getting organized. And the CPA's end. We <laughs> love that. Year. Yeah. <laughs> and you yeah, have the flexibility. The paperwork. 
where and when you want, exactly. Um, and as long as you grant to a 501c3 um, with very few limitations, that is doable. Um, money really continues to grow tax-free in a donor advised fund too. So you also kind of increase your giving power, which I'm sure oh, wow. Logan, you also love that as the accountant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is really a great way to involve the entire family, especially if you're getting the kids involved or grandkids involved in giving, you can do that together by making decisions uh, of giving from your donor advised fund. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, gosh, that's some really good information, you guys. So um, let me give you another question. Another question is from donors who actually have assets outside of stocks that and they want to give. And so how can they do that strategically? Yeah, I think that's another good question. And a lot of times maybe um, retirees have a lot of their net worth or their assets in their retirement vehicles, like their IRA. Yeah. And something that's relatively new, it's called a qualified charitable distribution. And what that means is you have to be at least 70 and a half. But once you reach that age, you can transfer assets, stocks, whatever's in your IRA. You can transfer something from the IRA directly to the charity. And what that means is you're not necessarily getting a tax deduction, but it's just completely avoiding your taxable income altogether. So let's say oh, wow. you take <clears throat> your required minimum distribution is $30,000, $5,000 of that you want to go to Green Umbrella. You're only going to show $25,000 as income on your tax return. So obviously mm -hmm. saves tax. And the other really cool thing about that is you'll be lowering your taxable income, even if you don't itemize your deduction. So with those higher itemized or the higher standard deduction limitations, a lot of people now maybe haven't been able to utilize the tax advantages of giving, but mm -hmm. with a QCD, even if you take the standard deduction, you get this tax benefit. So that's a really good way to um, give if you don't have a lot of you know cash on hand. Oh, awesome. Okay. This is our, our final question of the day. Green Umbrella also has a lot of donors who own real estate and property. So can they use donor advised funds um, and other giving vehicles, of course, to be, um, to be, can these be used for more complex assets like those? Oh, definitely, Beth. Um, that's a great question because in addition to stocks, like we've been talking about a little earlier, you can also gift real estate, um, shares of privately owned businesses, and oh, really wow. the sky's the limit when it comes to giving. Um, there's a lot of giving vehicles that can accommodate those more complex assets. Um, I know at GCF, we see that more and more these days. And we always say cash is not king when you wanna give. Um, so <laughs> it's something to think about, especially as you talk to your financial advisor when you go to folks like Logan over at Vivify, um, they'll be able to kind of look at your full financial picture and make a decision that's right for you and the impact you want to have on the community. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do. I do reiterate, you know, what Leah said about talk to your personal advisors um, because they're going to know your situation better and they might yeah. just help you brainstorm, you know, some of what you've learned today, certain goals that you have for your own financial situation um, and how to best utilize you know, your gift to the organization. Yeah, I do think there's a lot of value in that personal relationship where they start to understand what your values are, you know, and what your priorities are for giving. Yeah. And they often are aware of ways to give that you might not be aware of. And then, of course, they can certainly help you with the tax advantages and all the different unique ways to give. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you both so much for sharing and um, giving us all these great insights today. Uh, end of year giving is just such a great way to ensure that your priorities for our community are realized. So i um, hoping that this uh, 20, 2024 giving season is going to be a really exciting one. If you guys have any, you, you all listening today, have any questions, um, comments, or ideas for future collaborations like this, you can reach out to me and we can see about getting those on the schedule. But basically, I want to thank you both for helping me out with this today. And happy giving to everyone in 2024. Leah and Thank Logan you so much, again. Beth. Thank you so much. Take care. <laughs>